We've all seen the flashy neon lights of the big city. But have you ever wondered how those lights work? Or why true neon lights always look red? Many of us have wristwatches with dials that glow in the dark. How are they able to do that? And everyone knows what a fluorescent light bulb is. But what makes it different from an ordinary light bulb? The answers to these questions involve the study of electron transitions in atoms. In the 19th century, there was a great deal of study involving gas discharge tubes. Light from a typical incandescent bulb produces a continuous spectrum we view as white light. However, light emitted by a gas discharge tube containing a single gas, such as hydrogen or neon, produces an emission spectrum containing only certain wavelengths of light. If a white light is passed through one of these gases, the resulting absorption spectrum is missing certain wavelengths of light. J.J. Balmer determined an empirical formula that predicts the visible spectral lines in hydrogen, but no physical theory of the time could explain his findings. In 1911, Ernest Rutherford performed experiments involving the scattering of alpha particles by thin gold foil. He was surprised to find appreciable backscattering of the alpha particles, which could only be explained if most of the mass of a gold atom was concentrated in a minute nucleus with an associated positive charge. He also suggested that the nucleus of the lightest element, hydrogen, be called a proton. In 1913, Niels Bohr postulated a new theory of the atom in order to explain the Balmer series of hydrogen spectral lines. Bohr assumed that the hydrogen electron orbited the hydrogen proton in the nucleus in a circular orbit. He also made a radical assumption involving quantum theory that the angular momentum of the electron was quantized and could have only discrete values. The integer constant involved in his equation for the electron's angular momentum is known as the principal quantum number. It follows that the electron's orbit can have only certain possible radii. Therefore, only certain energy levels of the electron are allowed based on the principal quantum number. What is the energy of a hydrogen electron with a principal quantum number equal to 3? Try again. Correct, it's 1.5 electron volts. According to classical theory, an accelerating electron should radiate electromagnetic radiation. This would cause the electron to lose energy and spiral into the nucleus. This doesn't happen, so Bohr postulated that the electron moves in its orbit without radiating energy. An electron would only emit radiant energy when it transitions from one orbit to a lower orbit. The allowed orbits of the hydrogen electron in the Bohr model are commonly referred to as energy levels. The lowest energy level is called the ground state. Higher energy levels are called excited states. An electron must be given just the right amount of energy in order for it to be raised to a higher energy level. The energy necessary to completely free the electron from the atom is called the ionization energy. Normally, an electron in an excited state transitions very quickly to a lower state. When this happens, the atom emits energy as a photon. The energy of the emitted photon is equal to the energy difference between the two levels involved in the transition. Therefore, only a photon with particular wavelength or frequency can be emitted during a particular transition. Now we know why that neon light looks red. Let's determine the wavelength of light emitted when an electron transitions from the n equals 5 to the n equals 2 energy levels. What is the energy of the emitted photon? Correct. The energy is 2.86 electron volts. What is the photon wavelength associated with this energy? Try again. Correct. The wavelength is 434 nanometers, 
which corresponds to the color blue. If an electron absorbs a photon and is excited to an energy several levels higher, it can return to the ground state by stepping down through the intervening levels, emitting a photon at each step. The emitted photons necessarily have lower energies and therefore have longer wavelengths than the original exciting photon. This is the phenomenon known as fluorescence. A fluorescent mineral excited by ultraviolet light glows from the emission of visible light. This is how that fluorescent light bulb works. In some materials, when electrons are excited to higher states, they may remain in those excited states for a measurable amount of time before they transition back to the ground state. These phosphorescent materials are used for making the luminous dials on wristwatches, as well as the glow-in-the-dark toys and sports equipment. Now let's take a closer look at electron levels in hydrogen.